Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Easter vigil ceremony for 224. Uh, there are four parts to the Easter vigil. Uh, the first part is the known as the service of light. Then the second part is the liturgy of the word, the readings and the gospel. The third part has the renewal of our baptismal promises. And then the fourth and final part um, is the prayer of the Mass proper, ending with Holy Communion. So um, if you have the booklet here, um, we'll follow from page 43 onwards. So I'll just read out the short instruction or outline about what tonight is all about. Dear friends, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her family scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word, and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sheer hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And now our prayer to bless the fire, the paschal fire at the main door. O God, who through your Son, Jesus, bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify our new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor. Grant this to Christ our Lord. And now the blessing of our paschal candle. Christ yesterday and Christ today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. So I nip down now to the main door and light our paschal candle from the paschal fire. And on the way up through the church, um, in three, for three times, I'll say the words, the light of Christ. And your response is simply, thanks be to God.
now our prayer, uh, known as the Exalted. So remain seated now from now until our gospel. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angels, ministers of God, exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud, our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, a blaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dear friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, and folk with me, I ask you the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, full unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me the light of unshadow, of unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with heart and love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of her voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt through the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These, then, are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true God, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once she led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery and Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling as the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire unto many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a church so precious, O truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human, 
Therefore, Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may pierce a fear undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night, receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. And now we come to the second part of our service known as the Liturgy of the Word, our prayer. Dear friends, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. And in these the last days has sent us his Son as a Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. First reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made and indeed it was very good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, God. Response to the psalm, Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. You founded the earth on its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The water stood higher than the mountains. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. On their banks dwell the birds of heaven. From the branches they sing their song. From your dwelling you water the hills, earth drinks its fill of your gift. You make the grass grow for the cattle and the plants to serve man's needs. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord, my soul. Let us pray. God our Father, we are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning. 
except that at the end of the ages Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The third reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to the rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer for the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and to left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us free, flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him. My Father is God, and give him praise. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh he hurled into the sea. The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. The deep hides them. They sank like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, glorious in its power. Your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his You will lead your people and plant them on your mountain, the place, O Lord, where you have made your home, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made. The Lord will reign forever and ever. And again we pray, let us pray, O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day. 
For what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution, by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Now we pray together the Gloria prayer. Glory to God in the highest and on the earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray, O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service for your Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once and for all to sin. So his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. I invite you to stand for our gospel. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salem, brought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb, just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe, 
seated on the right hand side, and they were struck with amazement. But he said to them, There is no need for alarm. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See, here is the place where they laid him. But you must go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. That is there you will see him, just as he told you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Just a few very, very brief thoughts about our Easter Vigil Ceremony. The core of our faith, or put slightly differently, the foundation stone for our faith is that of belief in the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday. St. Paul tells us in his writings in a very famous line, if Christ had not risen from the dead, then our faith is in vain. Tonight, therefore, is one of two occasions in our church's year when we are invited to renew our baptismal promises. The first occasion is always in January, short uh, about the second Sunday after Christmas for the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. But again, at the Easter Vigil Ceremony, we once more renew our baptismal promises. So one might ask, what are the baptismal promises all about? Well, the promises are essentially the prayer of the creed, um, which are broken down, which is broken down into question and answer form. And the creed contains the core or the essence of what we believe in our faith. And the two amp lines for us for Easter are the end lines where we are asked, do you believe in the resurrection of the body? To which we respond, I do. And then further, we're asked as well, do you believe in eternal life, everlasting life, to which we respond, I do. Uh, and then, uh, as you're aware, there is the Paschal candle there that was blessed earlier um, in our ceremony. And the symbolism of that candle ties in with our core belief in life beyond the grave. And that Paschal candle represents for us the light of Jesus in the darkness of death. And again, always on the occasion of a funeral uh, in our church here, the Paschal candle is placed side by side the coffin of the person who has died. And that candle, the Paschal candle, is there just again to remind us that Jesus has triumphed over death, and death does not have the final say. Therefore, all of us undoubtedly have many needs and wants that we want to pray for this evening. Uh, maybe pray for family at home, family far from home, or whomever. But certainly we're invited again on the occasion of our Easter Vigil Mass to renew our firm conviction and belief in life beyond the grave in the company for God, and further as well, that one day we will all be together with family who have gone before us. So just maybe that might be our simple prayer for our Easter Vigil Mass for tonight, um, for 2.24. So we come now therefore to the third part of our uh, Easter service, which is the blessing of the Easter water and then the renewal of our baptismal promises. So the prayer to bless the Easter holy water is as follows on page 57 of this booklet. We have one there. Dear friends, let us ask the Lord our God to bless this water he has created which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. 
may he renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. And now we pray. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. And for us, we recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have all received their baptism. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. And now our prayer to renew our baptismal promises. Dear friends, through the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is ended, let us renew the promises of baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church and soul. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins? And do you believe in the resurrection of the body, and do you believe also in life everlasting? And may Almighty God the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has given us new birth, be water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his great grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. So I nip round Roy with the Easter holy water and sprinkle our good sails with that water. Just remain seated for our prayers of the faithful. On tonight, the most sacred night in our church's year, 
We pray once more for ourselves that God might give to all of us a deeper and stronger conviction and faith and eternal life and that one day we will all be together with family who have gone before us. Lord, hear us. And we pray as always for those who have asked for our prayer. We remember those whom we know who are struggling with health at the moment. And then too for those whom we know who are very ill in hospital at the moment. Lord, hear us. And we pray as well um, for some of God's Easter peace and joy to take root in our own hearts and in family life at home. Lord, hear us. And finally, we pray for our family dead, for Donna Dorian, buried from our church on Wednesday, for Edith Kitterson, buried earlier this afternoon, and then for Edward Rogers Carrigart, whose funeral is there tomorrow, Sunday afternoon. And then we pray for those whose anniversaries that fall around now, for Maureen Brown at the cross and her grandson Mark, for Charlie Byrne, her lay, and then too for Geraldine Gallion of Billy Garden. We pray that God may grant to all of them eternal rest. Lord, hear us. In silence, we pause now to bring to mind our other many needs. Lord, hear us. We pray the memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it no one, that anyone who fled unto thy protection, implored thy help, or sought the intercession, was left and aided by thee. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. Sinful and sorrowful, do not, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise my petitions, but in thy clemency, hear and answer me, amen. But those that they to the seats pass the baskets. That our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Lord, be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but on this night, above all, to love you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, 
Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and the earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Sanna and the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and bring from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, till you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our dead. Again, we pause to remember our family dead. And we pray once more for Maureen Brown, for her grandson, Mark, for Charlie Byrne, Geraldine Ganyanov, Donna Dorian, Edith Peterson, and Edward Rogers. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit the co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form the divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Together, we pray the prayer for inner peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. For a moment in silence, could we pause? 
to pray some of God's Easter peace to enter our hearts and homes for tonight. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon from Paul to Corinthians. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia.
Again, we pray for her family, Dad, for Maureen Brown, and then we for Mark, for Charlie Byrne, Geraldine Gallinov, Donna Dorian, Edith Caterson, and Edward Rogers. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, liberate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me, O good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within thy wounds. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. Defend me from malignant enemy. <clears throat> Call me at the hour of my death, and bid me come to thee. At what thy saints and angels I may praise thee for all eternity. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy. Eternal rest grant to them, Lord, that perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed. Peace, amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Um, before our blessing, which is fourfold, uh, a reminder that, well, Mass is as usual tomorrow, Easter Sunday morning at 10. Uh, during the forthcoming week, there will be two Masses prayed in our church on Wednesday and Thursday evenings at 7.30. Um, so the Thursday evening, 7.30 Mass, is a month's mind Mass for, uh, for Noel, um, who died last month, Noel Mala. Um, and then Friday's the first Friday. Um, there's a wedding here in our church. There's no evening Mass, Friday the first Friday. So two Masses this week. Um, the first is Wednesday evening at 7.30, and then Noel's <coughs> once main Mass on Thursday evening at 7.30. Also, uh, Divine Mercy, the Novena, in honor of Divine Mercy began yesterday, Good Friday, ends next Sunday, tomorrow week, Divine Mercy Sunday. You'll find those Novena prayer cards in the main porch way there. And then Trokra, uh, if you remember, to bring back the Trokra boxes up here as soon as possible. Um, and then finally, it's always thanks to Evelyn and the sacristy there. Thanks to the Kitty um, for all her help by way of washing uh, the, the albs, uh, and also to uh, the linen that's used uh, for the prayer of the Mass, then to Cahill and Patrick and our choir, our altar servers, our readers, Patrick and Margaret and Doogie there, Josephine help with communion, and then there's James and John and Andrew in the background there, so thanks to you all. Uh, by way of ending, uh, at the beginning, you may recall, may not, but there were some, there was a few very, very comforting um, uh, lines and words at the beginning of tonight's service. Just read them again and listen to them if you care. They're, they're lovely words, but the words run simply as follows. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's passion, death, and resurrection in this way, listening to his word, and celebrating his mysteries. This is the lovely few lines. Then we shall have the sheer hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And now our blessing. May Almighty God bless you through tonight's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting and spirit 
for those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down in you all and remain with you forever. Our Easter Vigil Mass has ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.